Wake up, Mr. Blue Borneo, or, or Miss Blue Borneo. Oh! Yeah, that was you in the, the picture. Doing real well. Oh, oh we're getting snappy now, huh? Easy, bud. There's uh, Mr. Etherus Clarecus cohabitating with Miss Tropidolamus. Tropidolamus cam. The business end of a Waggler's Pit Viper. And here we can see the pits. If I'd stop shaking. Beautiful scalation. Fantastic eye. Sorry folks, you just can't get shots like this and keep them steady and I don't have the latest uh, steady cam, uh, so we'll just have to make do. She's doing very nicely, has nice weight, is hanging out on the treetop there, looking good. Well, let's see if the Blue Borneo is interested in a snack. Yes, no, maybe? No? No? Oh, we see those little head twitches. That's a clear sign that, hey, leave me that alone. I don't want it. Kisterdon Taylor Eye Cam. This is uh, the business end of a Taylor's Cantil, part of the Kisterdon complex. It is a uh, relative of our copperhead and uh, cottonmouth here in the U.S. that lives south of the border in Mexico and uh, other parts of Central America. Uh, they're somewhat more hotter than the copperhead and uh, cotton mouth so we very much take uh, good care um, since crow fab doesn't really terribly work well period uh, um, it would probably be best if you got some uh, uh, bioclone antivenin if uh, accidents did happen with this animal um, they're very alert very twitchy like all the kisterdons um, just one of the uh, stunning uh, snakes of the Kisterdon complex. Um, this is the, again, uh, the Taylor's Cantile or the ornate Cantile as it's known. Um, I'll pull back so you can see the whole color scheme here. Uh, very beautiful sort of oranges and grays, charcoal colors. Uh, of course, they have that beautiful sulfur tail, which they use for cold alluring. Absolutely stunning uh, snake. Um, and these, uh, I used to have these in my collection, but uh, uh, I currently don't. My uh, friend Bob, uh, who's an Echistrodonaholic, um, has them in his collection, so he was nice enough to bring uh, bring it over to uh, uh, share with you since someone asked uh, on the forum uh, on the YouTube site if uh, I had any uh, cantiles. So we put this together for you guys. Now let's have a look at uh, the Kisterdon bilineatus, the uh, uh, standard run-of-the-mill cantile. Here we have a, a straight-up Mexican cantile uh, this is a Kisterdon bilineatus bilineatus. Uh, beautiful chocolate variety. Uh, this snake uh, was originally from uh, my friend Thomas, 
who breed some just beautiful cantiles. Um, as you can see, he's very alert. He's checking the camera out and probably seeing himself and probably detecting the little perp that uh, was hanging off the lens there the other night. Okay, he's decided, okay, this doesn't seem to be uh, a threatening thing, so uh, I'll strike at it anyway. Because he does look ready to go, so I'll just back off a little bit and we'll get a beautiful uh, overview of this specimen. This, I think, is an O4 specimen, or no, no sorry, O5 specimen. Uh, a couple years old, just doing beautiful um, as he strolls off into the sunset here on my tabletop. So there you have it. Uh, two of the species of Mexican cantiles. There's some other uh, interesting uh, um, cantiles uh, from other states in Central America, um, but I don't have uh, examples of those handy. So we'll let this uh, chocolate beauty uh, uh, go off uh, into the sunset, so to speak. Just stunning. Yeah, getting testy, huh, bud? All right. Certainly always uh, a challenge to keep uh, um, everybody's feeding up. And uh, this is how I do it. I, there's a program commercially available on the web. Uh, for those uh, keepers out there, if you uh, email me directly, I will send you uh, uh, to the website. It's very inexpensive. Uh, a lot of it is much more sophisticated than even I need, but you can put in uh, your animals and keep complete records on them, which is essential um, for uh, proper husbandry of the animals. And it you press a button and it spits out the list uh, who's due feeding and uh, who's not and uh, uh, this is the list that I work with so I don't know how many are are on there but there's quite a few for this weekend uh, uh, for feeding so I'm working through the list this is uh, one of my big old Osage Copperheads. He really likes chicks. Oh yeah, nice, huh bud? Is that tasty? Yeah. He's not used to being filmed, so I'll just uh, back off and let him uh, enjoy his chick. Here's another uh, rarely seen snake, uh, well, at least in my videos. It's my uh, Transpecos copperhead. Uh, certainly one of the most beautiful copperheads I've ever seen. He also likes chicks. Alright, alright. He's sort of a strike and release sort of guy. So we'll just let him go. Copperheads are very, very nervous snakes. Perhaps, uh, you know, all the snakes of the Echistrodon complex are very, very nervous. Uh, um, that's why I don't work with them uh, very much. But this uh, Picogaster or Transpecos copperhead is one of the most beautiful ones that I've ever seen. So we'll just let him eat in peace. Hmm, what do we have here? Can you say Kistradon Latakinkus or Broadband Copperhead? Another good feeder. Oh yeah, you got that. Good boy. There you go. Enjoy your chick. Yeah, that is not a nice, beautiful specimen, too. He's a little thin. I have to uh, feed him up a little bit. 
Here's another nice pair of Osage copperheads. This is a Kisterdon Feogaster. No, you're not into chicks. Really have to sort of be careful with uh, the two of them because once aroused, they can have a strike fest. Oh, there you go, bud. You want a chick? Oh, we got the tail going, that's for sure. Yeah, chicks are good. Oh, yeah, we a little bit of open mouth, okay. Oh, that's yummy. I don't give my snakes anything that uh, isn't yummy, okay. She's uh, heavily into tail rattling there. Okay, you better eat it quick before uh, the big bozo uh, goes and eats it.